Tonight, we're looking at claims about the ease with which drug users in Scotland can buy cocaine. We've been speaking to one former addict about his experience. It comes as a global survey is published into the drug-taking habits of people around the world. Eileen Clark reports. It gets a grip of you and there's nothing you can do about it. Cocaine, the so-called party drug. But for this man, who we will call Jamie, the party went flat when cocaine stopped being part of a weekend social life and started being a daily need. I was taking it every night, every night, um, and topped up at the weekends with a lot more uh, because I basically had, uh, I had my wages at the end of the week, so you tend to buy a lot more. The annual report by the Global Drug Survey highlights the speed cocaine can be sourced by those who want it. More than a third of those who responded in Scotland claim they could get a delivery of it quicker than a pizza. And that's very slightly higher than the number of those reporting such delivery times in England. None of this comes as news to Jamie, who this time last year was a regular customer. Very easy. Uh, it was a phone call, possibly before we went out or when we were in uh, maybe a pub or a club. Uh, we'd all put money together and phone up a certain person and it would deliver right to the pub. No problem at all. You could get it within half an hour and if you couldn't get it off of one, you would just phone another and get it just as quick. The report also suggests that when Scots take cocaine, they're taking more than a gram, while in England and elsewhere in the world, it tends to be less than a gram. Drugs workers say there are a number of explanations for that. And even different parts of Scotland will have quite fluctuating levels um, of purity, which means that people often compensate for this and will use more of cocaine as a result of that. Jamie has his life back on track now. He's been clean for almost a year. Uh, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, it's, uh, it's just feeling healthy, uh, feeling great, uh, having my family back, uh, working an honest life. Uh, and looking forward to what's ahead of me. And Aileen Clark's with me now. Aileen, can you put these claims into some kind of context for us? Well, Sally, it, it's worth bearing in mind that the Global Drug Survey is put together by taking information that comes from anonymous web surveys of recreational drug users. Now, the academics involved in pulling all that together, they themselves say that this should not be taken to determine, if you like, you know, how common drug use is in any population. That's not actually what it's for. I mean, what they use this for is to really help develop harm reduction strategies, for example, for drug users. Um, so apart from what users are telling them about how much cocaine they're using at a time, the survey really doesn't take us much further into how many people in Scotland, for example, are using cocaine. However, the Scottish Drugs Forum, who you heard there in my report, you know, they're saying it's well known that Scots are, you know, pretty high up there when it comes to the highest consumers of cocaine often combining it with alcohol. And worth a mention um, from this report today, uh, more than 16% of Scots respondents to this survey said they used the dark net to buy drugs. Now, usually when we hear about the dark web, it's in relation to something like child pornography or, or child abuse. And of course, that is a challenge for the police. Um, police Scotland said tonight that they keep across these trends and they adapt how they crack down on drug dealers to reflect that. Eileen, thanks very much for that. It's 11.46. This is Kay Adams with you on BBC Radio Scotland up until 12. Uh, now, Scotland is well known for many things, and it would seem one of them now is uh, cocaine. Uh, we hear this morning that drug users in Scotland consume the most uh, cocaine, uh, 1.2 grams in a single session, um, according to a worldwide survey of 44 countries. That's double the global average. Um, and we are told that uh, this research, which questioned 15,000 uh, cocaine users, users, um, that it can be delivered to you more quickly than a pizza in Glasgow. So that uh, sparked our interest and think, well, you know, how is cocaine used uh, in Scotland? Who is using cocaine in Scotland? And why does Scotland seem to have such a, a higher usage in terms of the amount per session than anywhere else? Um, I'm joined this morning by former cocaine user Jamie. Morning to you, Jamie. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, Katie McLeod, who is the National Training and Development Officer for the Scottish Drugs Forum. Uh, morning, Katie. 
Good morning, Kate. Good morning. Uh, perhaps I'm naive, but, you know, when I hear that the drug can be delivered more quickly than a pizza in Glasgow, um, I was a bit shocked. Um, I take it you weren't? Um, certainly cocaine is very accessible. It has been in Scotland for a long time. We're seeing a, a change in how people buy substances as well. More people using it online and different modes of purchase. And people obviously buy from friends and street dealers. So quite a wide variety of ways to access cocaine in Scotland. Is there a, a typical cocaine user? I would say there's no typical user. It goes right across different societal demographics. So everything right through from people that work in hospitality, people that work in different industries, right through to people that um, are homeless, um, injecting drug users. So we see really, really wide groups of people that use cocaine. Right. Um, presumably there's a, a, a budget question here. I mean, I don't, I, I don't suppose we should be advertising how much it is or whatever else, but you, you're going to need to be relatively solvent to be able to use it on a regular basis. Um, I think we see what we might describe as a two-tier market um, in Scotland. So we have much poorer quality cocaine, which is much uh, cheaper. And then we have much more expensive cocaine. So that will be based on purity and price. And that's kind of related to why Scotland might have a higher rate of cocaine consumption, because some of our cocaine purity is really quite poor. So people tend to use more cocaine because of that to compensate for the poorer quality. So where is it coming from? Uh, well, Cocaine comes from many uh, different countries, so obviously places like Colombia, Peru, but um, through the internet um, it's never been more easy to buy substances and of course all the traditional routes of purchase where drugs are shipped around the world using all sorts of um, illegal methods as well, so it's, it's very easy to access. Right, but to the end user, online is the most common way of accessing it, is it? No, I wouldn't say that. I would say that that's been an emerging trend which we tend to see with more affluent um, uh, groups where they can afford um, to buy online, you know, where it's maybe more expensive. But I think people still most commonly buy from people they know or people that they know through acquaintances. OK. Um, Jamie, you're a former cocaine user, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Where did you get it? Yeah. Variety. All over. All over Glasgow. When we never needed it. If one didn't have it, you just phone somebody else. Right. So this line about it being delivered more quickly than a pizza, it is that readily accessible, is it? I haven't ever done that, but I have uh, watched programmes referring to online and getting it quicker than pizzas. But I would imagine it would be. Yeah. So how long did you use it for? Uh, a long, long time. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually 11 and a half months clean and sober. Uh, coming up to my year sobriety and uh, I feel absolutely fantastic now uh, since I've got rid of my addiction. So why would you choose that, that drug? I think it was more um, just getting involved with nightlife. Uh, it started it off making you more relaxed around people, uh, enjoying yourself, uh, took you it took you to different places and it was uh, it was it was good at the time I must admit but uh, once it takes you to a dark dark place where I ended up uh, it's not so good and people people are actually dying through this stuff so your experience with it changed over time definitely um, I think it it put me more to the point that I thought I was lost in uh, everything and basic my job and what have you uh, that it took me and I had to seek help and fortunately my doctor had been given a letter uh, from uh, CA Scotland and uh, I phoned it up and 11 and a half months on I feel a completely different person Congratulations in, Thank you. In, in achieving that. Um, financially, I would imagine it would place a bit of pressure on you. Yeah, it was... I mean, uh, how much were you spending on it? I would... Uh, on average, uh, probably up until about 700 a week. A week? Yeah. Wow. Um, is that typical, Katie? 
Um, I think people can certainly escalate how much cocaine they use quite quickly. You know, it's a very moorish, um, short-lived drug, um, so the effects will wear off quite quickly. So if people have the financial ability to use more, um, that's quite a common pattern that we see. But equally, we see people that just use infrequently as well, so it, it can be quite different for different people. Mm. I mean, right, rightly or wrongly, and I've, I've no idea, the perception of, of cocaine is kind of different, isn't it, than other drugs? And, I mean, in Scotland, I suppose you've got to talk about heroin. I mean, cocaine has a, a slightly more, or a very much more, um, what would you say, uh, cool kind of image, doesn't it? I mean, it, it's often seen as being a bit, a bit of a, a party kind of drug, um, consumed by people with a bit of money and perhaps a pretty glamorous sort of lifestyle. Um, does that impact on the people who are drawn to it? I think you highlight a really important point, Kay, which is about the stigma that's uh, faced by people that use certain drugs like heroin. Um, and we have this different view of drugs like cocaine and certainly alcohol and things like that, when actually what we see is quite similar patterns where people are using in a chaotic manner. So we see the same kind of issues occur, um, but we tend not to look at heroin in the same way as other drugs. Yeah, I mean, did, did you make that distinction, Jamie, in terms of, I mean, how do you decide which substance to use? Uh, I think it's, it was just a, a case of... Moving up the scale, as, as a lot of people cry, uh, you, you, you tend to start off, well, I did uh, personally, uh, taking the uh, um, cannabis. And uh, the cannabis was a kind of relaxing drug. Uh, and obviously when you were going out, you didn't want to be in that kind of state of mind. So you, you tend to uh, try other substances and um, cocaine was... Uh, what I was uh, uh, attracted to, because I didn't, I didn't like uh, to look at, uh, like say, uh, people was on um, that, that other stuff. Uh, but everybody, uh, I, I know what's life. Uh, everybody has this addiction. You know what I mean? Uh, when when they have, uh, when they take this, and it's very hard. Uh, it, you know what I mean? Because yeah. And were you were you worried about the purity of it? Did you know what you were getting when you were buying it? I normally use pe people I, I knew would have a, a, a certain quality of uh, cocaine. Right. Okay. Rather than go down the road to buying you don't know what. Mm -hmm. Katie, do we need to be talking about cocaine use more? Absolutely. I think one thing that's highlighted um, in this research is talking about more people seek treatment at accident and emergency. That's maybe highlighting an issue around people not accessing mainstream drug treatment. Um, sometimes in Scotland, drug services are seen as catering for primarily drugs like heroin and alcohol and drugs like Valium. And there's something about um, some groups of cocaine users that won't go to drug services, um, but they may want to cut down. So I think it's important that services have the ability and the funding to actually cater for these different groups and, and can attract people that might not see their use as problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps the, the users themselves perceiving themselves in a different way from other drug users. Um, well, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much, um, Katie. Uh, Katie McLeod there, uh, National Training Development Officer for the Scottish Drugs Forum. Uh, and Jamie, thank you very much uh, to you and good to see you looking uh, healthy and uh, in a better place. Thanks, uh, Katie. So thank you very much indeed.